Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome into the Graham Lincoln MacLean podcast presented by Ingalls, the official supermarket of Graham Lincoln MacLean. And we're putting out just a bunch of episodes this week. <laughs> we had our special SMU episode yesterday, and today, our normal Wednesday episode, we're going to be talking Pitt because we have a massive game between number 18 Pitt and number 20 SMU this Saturday night in Dallas. And Mac, we had to get a Pitt player on, and who better? than Desmond Reed. This was, he was so genuine and yeah. just excited. Obviously he's excited to be at Pitt, but he seemed very excited to be on our podcast. I don't know what they told him, Mac. I guess they told him that we were good, but well, he, he was He heard good. from Bill Armstrong, that. this is the biggest thing in the ACC. He heard that. Yeah. So he was like, yeah. yeah, I want to be a part of this too. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. He and Bill, I'm sure they chat. Uh, but Desmond Reed, I mean, he's just, he's been phenomenal this season coming truly out of nowhere he gets yeah. into his story. He was at FCS, Western Carolina for two years, came over with Cade Bell. Pitt was his only power four offer. And now he's third in the country in all purpose yards per game. You just yeah. can't make that up. It's amazing. Yeah. It, it really is. And I have to say, KG, it was really like cool, refreshing, amazing. I mean, honestly, to hear his perspective in a world where I know a lot of people uh, fan wise and, and maybe even on the inside coaches and, and other players, things of that nature are like, just not happy with where we are and mindset yeah. wise and everybody just money, money, money. I totally get it. And you know, it's, it's two swords. I understand both sides of, of the blade there, but to hear him be ecstatic about getting that first and only, by the way, mm. power four, power five offer was so cool. Y'all, y'all are going to love that. It's early in the interview. It, it was really, really refreshing to see that and how genuine and the fact that it's translating to the field. Like this dude knows the opportunity that he's been given and he understands it. And he's trying to make the absolute most of it. He's yeah. killing it. it. It's been really, really fun to watch him and even just talk to him. Genuine dude, laughing, smiling the whole time. Uh, but when that helmet comes on, he's a killer. And uh, he, he's he's exciting. Speaking of killers and thinking of exciting things, uh, what is Jacob dressing up as uh, tomorrow? Uh, yeah, tomorrow <laughs> is Halloween. Jacob is going to be a zookeeper, obviously. Yes. He, he loves animals. He has so many stuffed animals. He's already a zookeeper, basically. He w wore his costume to boo in the zoo on Sunday, and he yep. had an amazing time. It was his zoo. I mean, he was just checking on things and seeing how things were going. And then he will continue his zookeeperness on Halloween. So I know he's excited. I, I, even though I'm going to Ingalls for all of my candy, because I want to be, as we've discussed, one of the cool houses in the, in the neighborhood where kids are like, yeah. I want to go there. Yeah. I'm not going to give my 18 month old any candy, right? No. Like I know, I know you're not giving Amelia any candy. Mac is what a do you mean? stickler. What do you mean? <laughs> Mac is a stickler. I give Jacob, like he had some cake at a birthday party. I don't, I don't know if Mac's going, Mac is like, no. discipline let me let me give let me give you two parenting things that just happened and khaki if you're watching and you're mad at me i'm sorry uh okay. it's more me actually we're both pretty good about it. um so anyway so we're, we were discussing that because you know amelia goes to school tuesday thursday so she will be at school for halloween and, and mm. i'm talking to khaki like do you think they're gonna give her candy and she was like well they might but probably to take home like they're not gonna feed them candy and i was like okay that's cool and then she was like, but it is someone's birthday and they're celebrating. And I said, really? Uh, we probably need to talk to the teacher about Amelia's not having it. And Khaki's like, Eric, we don't want her to be the only one. I said, I do, actually. I don't Matt. care. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm team absolutely not. Dude. Khaki was like, maybe we can just scrape off the icing. We'll see. Uh, I'm psychotic about Poor it. Amelia. She doesn't Good get thing. any candy. Meanwhile, there was a picture from school last week where Jacob <laughs> literally has his entire face in a cupcake. So I can understand. Go. I can understand that one. <laughs> cupcakes. <laughs> great cupcakes at Ingles that's, as well, Max. Just going to throw that out that's there. Right. That's the moral of the story. Thank you for bringing that back. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to go shopping. We're doing it today. Uh, this is Tuesday, not Wednesday. We're doing it today. We're loading up. I know you are too, KG. And it's just... Here's the deal. You, how could you run out of, Ing, of of Ingles like Halloween candy? Like they are so smart yeah. pumping it in. You can never have enough. People are going to buy it like us last second. So they've got it there. So if you're last second as well, go to your local Ingles, load up <laughs> on the candy. There's still time. There's still time. Did you know Ingles only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. 
Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. Desmond Reed, my man, I've been waiting on this episode to talk to you, brother, because it has been so much fun uh, watching you this year, watching you in this offense, and it just feels like you have taken absolute advantage uh, of everything that, that has happened in your career. Great to see you. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How y'all doing? Man, we're, we're living great. the dream. We get to talk to you. We get to talk to you. So let, let's kind of start with uh, let's kind of start with the decision, man. To to go to Pitt, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's it's very common sense, and there's an easy answer. But how did you kind of come about that, and and why did you decide to go to this great great university? Um, you know, I always you know I always wanted to go Power Five. You know, Power well Power Four now, but at the time Power Five. Um, uh, you know, I had my season at Western. Um. You know, it was all right. I, I didn't really get to, you know, do what I did. Because, I mean, wanted to do because I was hurt. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, with all the tape I had from my freshman year and last year, I you know, I was like, I, I got to try to, you know, push myself, you know, try to go power five, do what I can. Um, and, you know, throughout the whole process, uh, K was hitting me up. K Bell was hitting me up, uh, telling me that, he you know, he might have, he got a couple schools that's, you know, looking at him about taking a job. Wow. Um, but you know, I had you know I had schools that was you know trying to come at me. Um, mm -hmm. One, none of them, none of them was Power Five, but they was uh, FBS. Um, and you know, when I was on my visit with Coastal Carolina, um, K. Bell ended up calling. This is after he got the job, so he ended up calling me, telling me that they're going they're going to give me an offer. Um, yeah, he called me, telling me they was going to give me the offer, and then like a day later, I had to come up here on the visit. So as soon as yeah, as soon as I landed uh back in Miami, um, coming from my visit from coast, I had to get up the next day and come back, come up and fit. Um, and you know I just enjoyed the hair, um, enjoyed the players, enjoyed the coaches, just loved everything here, and that yeah. kind of you know pushed me to make the decision I made. Come on, man, I love that. Well, what what was that like for you? Because I mean, I can see the passion, I can see the excitement. Yeah in your face and in your voice as you're talking about it. And it, it is a dream, right? It's a dream for all of us. We all played, you know, college ball. And, and you know, to get that Power 5 offer, that Power 4 offer, I mean, what did that mean to you, your family, your community, all that? I mean, it was, it was, I, I was just happy. I was real happy. It was a blessing. You know, this is something I always wanted. Um, You know, I always talked to my parents about it. You know, they kept pushing me, telling me my time going to come. Just keep doing what I can I can do and control. I only can control what I can control. Um, you know, it's just a blessing having the opportunity, you know, come play out of power five, um, and do what I'm doing and help my team win. It's, it's a blessing. Des, we can see it on your face. I mean, your smile when you were said, when you said, I got that offer, it, 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 like you said, Mac, I mean, it took me back to my first mm -hmm. power five at the time, cause we're old yeah. Des, power five offer and, and same with Mac. So it's just really cool to see you live in that dream. And then let's fast forward to now, right? Okay. So you're thinking I'm finally going power five. This is exciting to I'm playing like one of the best players in the country. I'm third in the country in all purpose yards per game. I know you're a confident guy. I know you've got that chip on your shoulder, but did you expect this to just kind of explode and for you guys to be undefeated? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I knew the team was, you know, I knew the team, we had talent. I knew we just had all had to bring it in together and, you know, and that's what we're doing, you know, that you see what it's leading to. I knew we had a, a whole bunch of talented, uh, talented guys. Um, but sure, I'm I'm just I'm just happy with how everything going, you know. Um, especially with the offense, you know, a lot of a lot of the players here are new. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we got a couple of the guys back from last year, but um, you know, all of us had to get adjusted to well, not all of us, but uh a lot of them had to get adjusted to, you know, the playbook, um, with how everything run run in the offense. Um, and you know, we still not where we wanna be at yet, but we we're getting there. And, um, you know, that's a good thing. We're undefeated, and we still haven't really proved what we really can do. Um, so, you know, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's scary for other teams mm -hmm. listening to this. But you mentioned the playbook. So you're coming over with offensive coordinator Cade Bell. You know the playbook. Like, you're familiar, but really no one else on the team is. And, of course, this is such a, a switch for Pitt. Like, mm -hmm. going from what they played last year offensively to this year, 
how were you able to help some other guys? Like was, was the first day of spring ball, just you running circles around people? Cause you knew what was going on. Like, take us into that process. I mean, uh, you know, before, before spring ball came, uh, we was having a lot of meetings, um, with the running backs, you know, they was all coming to me, asking me about a lot of stuff. Um, and I just, you know, tried to help whatever I could help them with. Um, I told, I let them all know, you know, whenever you need something, you know, you can hit me up. I'm not one of them guys that just, and I know I, I want to play, you know, but I'm not going to stop trying to I'm help them because I want to play, um, you know, so we all, that's, and that's kind of how we built our relationship, you know, um. We end up, you know, coming on me and almost every day um, around that time, um, you know, talk about plays. You know, we started going out a lot, you know, just doing running back things, you know, just together, um, you know, and that just, you know, that kind of brought brought us together. And, you know, the uh, type of relationship we have, we don't really care who's, you know, who's in there doing good or not. You know, we just all happy to be out there and see whoever winning out there, you know, yeah. you know, that's just good. And I love it so far. <laughs> Well, you know, you know what is so unique about that? I, I feel like the, you know, running back room a lot of the times is is of that nature. Like you, you guys, mm-hmm. number one, understand, hey, you know, I don't want, you know, 600 carries in college. Like mm-hmm. I want to preserve my body and, and be able to show, you know, what I can do. And I need other guys to be able to come in yeah. and help me out or I can go and help them and, and things of that nature. There always seems to be a really close bond amongst running backs, which I love to see. Yeah. I do want to dive in a little bit more about you helping guys. And again, having played in that, was that a, a, a different role for you? Was that, you know, hard for you? Or was it one of those things where you're just like, hey, I know this, I can help everybody. Let me take a step in kind of my leadership abilities. Oh yeah, I mean, it wasn't really nothing new for me um, because even, you know, when I was at Western Carolina, um, you know, especially when like newer guys come up, freshmen, the transfers come, I'm always, you know, willing to help. Um, so, you know, it was nothing really new for me. Um, and even in high school, I had to do the same thing. You know, me being the leader on the team, got to help. Um, you know, so it's nothing really new to me. And, you know, I didn't really have – I don't have no problem with doing that, um, yeah. any of that. Some people you know, are just born with it, KG. Some people just yeah. – Some people got it. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure, Des. I mean, and let's just talk about what you guys have done this year, the undefeated start, 18 in the country, 7-0. And specifically this Syracuse game, all right? Because this is the last reference point we have for y'all. Des, you're watching your defense do this. I mean, have you ever seen anything like that? And what was your reaction? Because you had one of the best seats in the house to watch your defense pick off Syracuse five times and three pick sixes. Um, yeah, I mean, it was crazy. You know, me just being on the side, I'm like, wow. Like, just seeing all that, it was like, wow. You know, they they was, you know, they had the uh, top offense. You know, they had a, yeah. a great quarterback. Um, you know, and all the hype, you know, was coming through, you know, they got a good offense, you know, our defense got to, you know, do their thing. Um, and you know, they, they, and they did, um, <laughs> you know, they got the pick sixes. They, they did what they were supposed to do. And, um, and I was really happy with that. Um, you know, at the beginning of the season, uh, you know, the defense, they wasn't really quite where it was, they at now, um, you know, and, they, and where they're leading at the past two games, they've been doing real good. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, offensively, we just got to come together. And shoot, we, we all do what we're supposed to do. We're going to be a great team. Yeah. And, and I love that you admit that because it's true. The, the, the de- when I was watching the defense the first you know couple of weeks of the season, I'm like, you know, something's not clicking. Something's weird. Mm-hmm. Something's different. Um, and then it just exploded these last mm-hmm. two games. And I'm seeing yeah. guys getting more time, maybe guys that should have been in earlier, guys making the most of their opportunity and, and just playing at a high level. So what happened? What Did you see it in practice? Did you ever know or – just in a game one day, hey, two weeks ago, a flip kind of switched. Um, yeah, you know, uh, well, us offensive guys, we don't really try to worry about what the defense do. Yeah. You know, cause we know, I mean, we know no matter what defense do, we gonna have to play. Um, That's right. So you know, um, I don't know what it was. You know, I don't never really worry about the defense. Um, but shoot, now shoot, they doing they doing their thing. It's you know, I really, watch. really, we really trust them. Yeah, we really trust them. They trust us. You know, that and that's what it's about. Um, There's you know, sharks in the here. river. There's sharks yeah, in the sharks. river. That's all I got to say. <laughs> They're playing at a high level. Well, let, let's go back to your side uh, and, and let's go back to the offense because uh, as we kind of mentioned, as, as you mentioned, KG mentioned the all-purpose yards, you're just fun to watch play, man. You, you're a great weapon. You're very versatile in the things that you can do. You're great in pass protection as well. I mean, there's nothing that, that you're not able to do. How did you get to that point? I mean, how are you – you know, such a great piece and, and dynamic weapon for offense. 
I mean, I just, you know, off season, you know, when all the off season here, I try to, you know, work on everything, you know, um, even my strengths. I like to work on them, you know, uh, work on my strengths, um, work on my weaknesses. You know, I try to work on that a lot. Um, and, you know, I can't really explain it. You know, that's just, it's just that's just what it is, you know, just working on that. And, it, you know, it got me here where I'm at now. But but even catching the ball, like running back struggle to do that. And, yeah. and you do it effortlessly. I mean, it's just, have you always been that way? Like, again, I'm looking at this. You're the second leading receiver. You do all these different things in the kicking game. It's honestly like you're playing backyard football and you're just saying, give me the ball <laughs> any way you can. Yeah. I mean, it started, it started in Little League. Um, in Little League, I mean, I really I almost played everything, literally. Um, D, I used to play safety, corner, all that. Um, line, they used to put me at linebacker sometimes. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't really see over the line, but I, I come up and tackle. Um, but you know, uh, that yeah, that's where it started with. Um, you know, I had to do a lot of everything. You know, when I was yeah. little. Um, and I think that kind of you know helped me as I grown up. You know, with that. Um, so you know that kind of helped me with all the stuff that I do now. Catching the ball. I mean, I played a little. I played a little receiver in high school. My my ninth oh, and tenth grade year, I was playing receiver. Um, my ninth tenth grade year, I played receiver. Ended up moving back to running back my eleventh grade year. Um, so you know that I think that's probably where the uh, you know, the hands, the catching comes yeah. from. Me playing a little yeah. bit of the receiver. Well, it's paid off. It's it paid shows. off. And let me just let yeah. me give you a little advice. Uh, you know, our, our guy back in the day when when you see different guys, Isaiah Simmons for Clemson was such a versatile piece. And mm -hmm. at the NFL Combine, they asked him, what position do you play? And he said, Isaiah Simmons, defense. You need to say uh, uh, Desmond Reed, offense, uh, when you're up there, because that's just what you do. That's just what you do. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Willing, I'm, willing, I'm willing to do whatever, no matter yeah. what position is that. Would you rather have a receiving touchdown or a rushing touchdown, if you had to choose? I mean, I wouldn't be mad with anyone, but uh, – I mean, of course, I I have a, I'd rather have a rusher. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. True running yeah. back at heart. Yeah, but I'm happy. I'm happy with both of them. <laughs> happy yeah. with both of them. Any touchdown that that'll work yeah. for you, Des. Yeah, any touchdown. Okay, let's talk about this game because this game is huge. This game coming up this this weekend, I think it's um, one of the biggest games in the country. It, it's in some ways a de facto playoff game, right? Mm -hmm. If you win this yeah. game, you really put yourself in position to to get in the playoffs. So. You're traveling to SMU. We did an SMU episode yesterday. Those people are excited, Des. It's going to be packed. I believe the former president's going to be there, okay? I mean, there's going to be some who's who's in Dallas. Night game, <laughs> all of that. How excited are you to go on the road, the potential to quiet that crowd, to play in that environment? I mean, it looks like just looking at you answering this question that you can't wait. Yeah, you know, uh the whole team, we're very excited. We uh we all know that they're a good team. Um we know we can't just come out there and play flat and you know, we know that. So uh we gotta come out, you know, just play hard all four quarters. Um and just believe in the coaches, believe in our teammates and you know, that's gonna lead to what uh what we do, you know. Um we we just gotta be focused. You know, it started uh today with practice, you know, we had a great practice today. Um we just gotta continue with that uh tomorrow and uh Thursday. And we, we should be good. Yeah. And I know this is a little bit more of a unique situation because you guys played uh, early in the week last week. So you got to kind of sit back and watch. And, and yeah. I'm sure you saw them on Saturday. Uh, and I know it's still early. It's, it's just Tuesday when we're recording this. But just initial thoughts on their defense and, and kind of what do you guys have to do or make sure you do offensively to execute on Saturday? Um, you know, they, yeah, they have a great defense. Um, you know, we watched them. They have a great D line. They, they really just have a whole the whole defense just good. Um, you know, we just gotta execute on everything. On everything we do, we just gotta execute no matter what it is. Um, we can't be messing up on little things. We just gotta we gotta try to be perfect. And that's what it is. We gotta try to be perfect, do everything right. And that'll that'll lead to us, you know, doing what we're supposed to do. Des, before we get you out of here, we gotta ask you about uh what LaShawn McCoy said and his tweet. <laughs> I think Jeez, it was an Instagram, Instagram comment. He said, quote, but I'm an even bigger Dez fan. He got us lit two fire emojis. Uh, <laughs> Dez, what did that mean to see that from a pit legend? Oh, yeah. That, I mean, that mean a lot to me. You know, like I said, he was one of my favorite running backs growing up. You know, he was the, he the reason I'm an Eagles fan. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so that, was, that was big, you know, seeing that he's watching. And, um, I'm, you know, he liked what he's seeing from me. Um, you know, that's pretty big. Um, 
you know, that's a lot of people, you know, dream, you know, they like, they want, you see professional athletes, you know, look at, be watching them and, you know, doing all that. Um, But, you know, I'm just very, very blessed and excited. You know, I'm just continue to ready to work. Yeah. I love that. Is is he kind of who you model your game after? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I who, do you, who do you try to play like, like you see him on Sundays or guys that are gone and done. Who, who do you try to be? Who do you try to play like out there? Oh, I mean, my mindset is, you know, I, I'm trying to be myself. I want to be different from everybody else. You know, I want to have my own, my own game. You know, just I want to do everything different from everybody else. You know, I want to be able to do everything. Um, so I would, I wouldn't really say I model my game at with anybody, but I do, I, I do like watching a lot of the players in the NFL, like uh, Alva Kamara. Mm-hmm. Um, even though Christian McCaffrey hurt, I like watching him. Um, yeah. you know, because you know they get used in the running and the pass game. They're very good in the running pass game. Um, so them two backs that I really like right now, that's an NFL. Weapons. That's that's the common yeah. denominator. All three of yeah. those guys. Uh, yeah. Man, this was great. This was a ton of fun. I can't wait to see it in person here in a couple of days. Good luck the rest of the week and uh, safe travels to Dallas, my man. Thank you. I appreciate that. You have a good day. Thanks again to Desmond Reed for joining us. What a pleasure to talk to him. What he's done at Pittsburgh is one of the best stories in college football, I would say. Yeah. And they're going to need a big game from him at SMU. We're going to get into this game, Mac. We do have to remind people that you need to go to Underdog Fantasy. It's the easiest place to play fantasy sports. They're going to have all sorts of picks for this game, this Pitt SMU game. You're going to want to check it out. It's not up yet, but it will be very soon. So keep checking. Yeah. Use our code GMPOD to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash. It is so fun. It's so easy. You can do it. Pre-game, you can do it Thursday, Friday, you can do it in-game. There's just so many different options, Mac. It's a great the time. in-game stuff is a game changer. That's Yeah, like, I'm not crazy enough to do that, scary. but I know you are. Yeah, it's it's a little scary when you do it. But let me tell you this, what I learned, and call me silly that it took me this long. I did not know that within the app, you can like click on a player and it will mm-hmm. show you their recent performances. Did you know that? Oh, no. I was just having what to do my own research. You're learning. So you can look at it and you can like figure it out. And let me tell you this too. You can also adjust different odds. So let's say, let me see, let me find one for you. How do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? Hold on, hold on. It's informing me so much here. Uh, 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 uh. This is, um, I can't do it visibly while we're doing this, but I did it earlier where you could click it and you could change uh, what it was. So like, let's say it was a hundred passing yards. Mm-hmm. I could change it to like 80 passing yards, which it adjusts your winnings. Oh, but it allowed me to kind of make my own thing. I don't know. I'm sad. I couldn't just show you this That's live, but I did, I did it this weekend. So just look into it. There's, there's a lot of different things within underdog that you can find out. Yeah. Just <laughs> spend some quality time on that app. It's yeah, a great app. Use our good. code GM pod. All right, Mac, let's talk quickly about this game. So embarrassing. I couldn't just do it live. I'm so embarrassed right now. Anyway, maybe we'll go back. Just go look. Edit it. (laughs) Yeah. And all the viewers are like, sure, Mac. Yeah, that's a thing. I'm sure sure it's possible. I'm sure it's possible. (laughs) Okay. Pitt's traveling to SMU. We've got 7 0 Pitt, 7 1 SMU. Top 20 matchup. I don't know if there's a single soul who predicted this would be a top 20 matchup on November 2nd, back in July or August. Mac, the big question in this game, who the heck is playing, right? And we're doing this, we're recording this on Tuesday afternoon. So far, we've got Eli Holstein, who they're saying is a wait and see situation. And then just today on Tuesday, Rhett Lashley said that Kevin Jennings' availability is up in the air. But then Kevin Jennings came on and talked to people afterwards, and he's like, I feel fine. So, you know what, Mac? My availability is up in the air for Friday's episode. Yeah. I will let yeah. you know. <laughs> day to day. KG is now day, day to, to day. day. I've worked her too much. This is the third episode. She can't do a fourth. She can't do a fourth. Uh, isn't that so weird to you, though? Like the, the new world. The, I don't know. I feel like Narduzzi has always done this. Like he, he's just a guy that 
he's going to get every advantage he can, right? Yeah. Or think whatever advantage he can. And a lot of coaches are like that. But Narduz, it feels like the most in our league, uh, is the one that does it. Where he's like, I don't have to tell you. I'm not telling you anything. Not You're not going to know anything. until we show up. Uh, we might so not I, even what, what show up. Say? What did he say post game? That something just got in his eye? Like he's yes. fine, something got in his eye? Post game, there was dirt the, in his uh, eye. Yeah. So then a couple hours later, he is day to day. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, you know, he walked back probably to the locker room and was like, dang it, I could have missed it. We could have got a leg up on these guys. Yeah. Yeah. I'll redo it. I'll, I'll fix it. I'll fix it all. So who knows? I hope they play. I'm going all the way to Dallas to watch them play. So I hope that they're out there. I hope they're available. I, I want this thing to be at full strength. Uh, mm -hmm. But on a serious note, this is about the time where stuff starts happening. Like football is True. a tough sport. It is a hard yeah. sport. And this is where we start to see guys start to get injured week 10 or so. Um, so who knows? Who knows who's going to be available? Who's, who knows who's going to be out there? But, you know, when I look at this matchup, KG, and funny enough, Rhett Lashley said this, Coach Lashley, on, on Tuesday, these offenses are very similar. Like they mm. want to do the same type of stuff with tempo, explosive plays. Uh, you know, obviously they want to throw it a bunch, but they run it a lot too. Like they, they almost – you know, pass to run in, in some instances there. So mm. I can't wait to see it. There's playmakers all throughout on both sides, you know, of the offensive side of the ball there. And then, you know, you really have two great defenses that are very optimistic yeah. uh, and, and opportunistic, excuse me, that, that are going to take the ball away and they'll score. Uh, now it, it's obviously been heightened to a billion as of recently with, with Pittsburgh and the things they do, but coming into the last week, SMU had the most defensive touchdowns and maybe they still do for the whole season. Like both these guys, they catch a pick or they pick up a fumble. They turn into offensive players. So th what's interesting is this has all the makings of being like a 45, 40 game or like a 12 to 17 game. Like it's, mm. they're both there and I, it's going to be fascinating to see it. I cannot wait. Yeah, they are. And, and we do, these defenses are both phenomenal. Of course, SMU has been doing it all season where they've been forcing turnovers. And then you've got Pitt coming off one of the most unbelievable defensive performances in college football history. I think that's fair to say with three pick sixes and then two more right. picks. These are the number two and number three defenses in the ACC in yards per play allowed, which says a lot. Duke is number one. And of course, um, SMU just beat Duke. And I yeah. think, Mac, weirdly, both teams coming in with a lot of momentum. Different momentum, right? Pitt coming off a blowout where they, like we said, crazy numbers. But SMU coming off a game where I think a game like that instills almost a different level of belief in your team. You and I were talking about this. Right. When Coach Lashley was going through how they prepared to block the field goal earlier, like two weeks prior to the game, and then how they actually did it, when your players see your coaching staff doing that, like taking right. the extra time to have that preparation, working on it in practice, it coming to fruition and working. I just, that has an effect on a locker room. It, it feels like yeah. both of these teams, it's rare in a matchup like this. So it's going to be one of the more marquee matchups of the season. Both teams are coming in on a high. Both teams are coming in with tons of momentum. And I guess it just comes down to, you know, which quarterbacks play or, or which backup quarterback do you trust the most? I would right. say it's Preston Stone, right? In that situation, you, you trust Preston Stone. Yeah, But there's also the Kevin Jennings factor. He's got to bounce back, right, mentally. For sure. And yes. Rhett Lashley was talking to us about that. You and I, we both as former athletes understand having a game like that, I, that's tough. It's, it's a tough yeah. situation to bounce back from. It, it really is. And I think it, you know, I always <laughs> ask the, uh, the crazy questions like, why do we baby quarterbacks? Why, why do we do that? Like, I know. Hey, you you, love, have a you love to ask that question. It is out. I, you know, and, and it was funny. I didn't want to like step on coach's toes because I love him. I probably will on Friday in person. Um, but when he said that about, you know, yeah. you, you never want to yell at a quarterback or not that you don't want to yell at him. However he phrased it, whatever he said, those quarterbacks, they're so soft. But uh, I really wanted to ask him and be like, hey, if your left guard gave up six straight sacks, are you sure. leaving them in? No, you're taking them out. Well, you you're getting them out of the game. You're getting them out of the game. very capable backup too. Exactly. But. I do think there is something about the mental side of it. If you take that guy yeah. out, is he doubting himself? Is he done side. the rest of the season? The locker room's like, this guy stinks. Uh, instead, it's just your guy. You ride it out, and it is what it is. And you won, so nothing's wrong. That, I, that was more of a general situation thing, not specifically aimed at anybody. Uh, but it is fascinating. And so for that reason – Sorry, that was a long way to get to your question and your point there. I do think mentally he's going to be able to get over it because it's not like he was pulled, not like he was benched. 
he wrote it out and ultimately he won the game in overtime for the team, right? Like he, he was yeah. the guy that got it done. And so it's, it's such a learning curve. There's so many big plays in that of two hands on the football when you're moving in the pocket. If he has that, he doesn't fumble the ball. When you're rolling to the right, you never, ever, never throw it back to the left across the entire field across your body trying to make something happen there. You just don't do it. So Unless you know, you're Cam Ward, but whatever. He, it was a pick six when he did I know, it. So he no, did get picked. Yeah. No, not even if you're Cam Ward. Uh, so, yeah, so that's the thing. You, you, you learn those lessons uh, in a W. Sit down with a quarterback coach that's been there, done that, really great uh, in De'Aaron King, and, of course, a, a very – you know, offensive oriented, offensive minded head coach that always has your back. So I think he'll be just fine, but it's a huge test. It's a much yeah. bigger, more aggressive, more proven test. I get the number part for Duke, but this is what they do on a consistent basis. And those sharks, listen, I'm doing a tape on these guys, KG, on Saturday, and I was going through the plays. Like, obviously, the picks are one thing, but the tackles for loss that they had and Ooh. just like quick trigger. We see ball, we get ball. It was nuts on some hits. And so SMU obviously has to have a big plan in place. The good thing is they just played Duke, who has the most tackles for loss, all these things. Yeah, It yeah. should be similar. Just don't turn over the ball, and you should be in an okay spot. And then, of course, SMU has Elijah Roberts on their side, too, the, yeah. the tackle Must. for loss king yeah. um, in yeah. college football right now. Mac, two things for me in this game. A, turnovers obviously are going to be huge. We just saw Pitt force five, and we just saw SMU give away six. Like, yeah. it's obviously going to be massive, and SMU's defense is really good at forcing turnovers in general. So I think it's fair to say whoever wins the turnover battle is most likely going to win the game. And then secondly, this is by far the best environment Pitt will have played in all season. Their mm -hmm. road games, I mean, their true road games this year, Mac, are just at Cincinnati and at UNC. That's it. They have a lot of road games left. They have three true road games left, SMU and then Louisville and BC later. So yeah. this this team has been very good at home. They don't have as much experience on the road. They did win that game at Cincinnati. So will that be a factor? I, I think it probably will. Right. Well, I, I agree with you. And I think it's, you know, again, the, the turnover piece of it, you know, SMU has been so good at that all year. I mean, it's what they do. They're, they're second in the league uh, in picks. They're like third in the league in, fumble force and and so it's just that they're gonna do it they're gonna get their hands on the football uh now Pitt is up there as well they're fourth yep. in interceptions and certainly this past game elevated that a ton uh that they went from five to ten so you, they were at like 14th and jumped up to four in one game uh when when you have that type of, of conversion so it's more of the nature you know for SMU it's what they do it was kind of a, a flash in in the pan uh, for Pittsburgh, but clearly they showed the ability. Clearly they did it against one of, if not the best passing offense in the ACC right now. Uh, so it, it, it's a proven commodity. So I totally agree with you. It, it, this is in these type of matchups. And I know people roll their eyes, whatever. Oh, we hear everybody say this. Can you run the ball? Can you stop the run? Can you protect the ball? That's mm. it. That, that's how you win. That, that's how you win in these mega matchups that, that we have here. And I, and I love what you said too. It's playoff football. You lose yeah. this game, you're probably out. You're probably done. You win this game, A, you're still in the chance to go to Charlotte. B, you're probably in the run to make a playoff, college football playoff. So it's a it's a big-time deal. It matters. It means a lot. And uh, I cannot wait to see it. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be great, Mac. I know you're uh, getting ready for your Texas Twinkies. <laughs> I, I really want to know, like, I guess Texas Twinkie, you cut up a big piece of meat, right? So just – Eventually, I just want to know the final total of like how many Texas Twinkies you have. Okay. okay. Can you keep me posted okay. on that? Yeah, I, I will for sure do that. Now, they, they are rather large, so don't be underwhelmed by some That's number. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Like after three, I might be about to throw up here. So we'll see what happens. Um, who knows what, what the, uh, the outcome of that will be. But I cannot wait. I cannot wait to be in Dallas. I cannot wait to see this game because I think it's going to be absolute fireworks. There's superstars all over the field. Uh, and, and we'll have a little bit more of a breakdown, maybe some tendencies, things like that on Friday. Give you picks in our uh, picks. That number. Right now it's seven and a half. It's staying um, at seven and a half. That's interesting to me. Yeah, that seems high. Yeah. Seems yeah. high. It, I do think it's high too. And maybe that's some of the Eli Holstein stuff. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, more to come on Friday. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Loaded week. Let's keep it going. Uh, you, you guys have been fantastic. 
tuning in. Greatly appreciate that always. Um, and of course, we need your help. We need you to go over to YouTube, subscribe, jump on this channel, leave some comments, kind of our initial thoughts, where you are, let us know. Uh, and then, of course, over on Apple Podcasts as well, rate, re review, subscribe. We would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see y'all.